All right, this is Born from Born.tv, and today I want to talk about Final Fantasy XIV. I want to have a little discussion with you while I'm doing my Palace of the Dead leveling of my wonderful, wonderful machinist, which I'm enjoying like crazy. Um, and the, the topic I want to talk about is should new people, you know, get into Final Fantasy XIV right now? I get this question a lot on my live stream. Hey, Buona, I'm a new player to the series. Is it too late to get into it? There's been a lot of people uh, covering this topic and saying, you know, I even saw an, an article on PC Gamer discussing whether it, it's worth recommended it, recommending the game to a new player. And that's what I want to kind of focus on because I do it all the time. I, I talk to people on my live stream while I'm streaming it and playing it and stuff. Um, and it is an uh, MMORPG. And if you've been part of MMORPGs for, I don't know, as long as I have, uh, then you probably know, and you probably can guess, that the initial leveling process and getting to max level is not always peaches and cream. In the past, you know, a lot of MMOs focus mainly on in-game or uh, group raid activity. And Final Fantasy XIV focuses on story first. That's like the first thing it focuses on. And then once you're done with the story... Then it starts throwing a lot of cool dungeons and in-game stuff at you, right? So the 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 word on the street and what everybody's saying, again, I'm going to take that tack first to say what everybody else is saying, is that the game is not worth the leveling grind. Uh, that it's not worth going through the story. The story is too slow. The story is too, too uh, it, it's just, it's a bunch of reading. There's no sense or rhyme to it. It's very slow paced. Is poorly produced, all kinds of negative stuff out there. And while I do agree with some of the criticisms out there, I do want to make it clear that it is it's an MMORPG. So if you've leveled up in WoW, if you leveled up in Terra, if you leveled up in just about every MMO out there, save a couple. You skip the story. You just skip dialogues. You 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 just hammer through quests. You 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 click all of the Click all of the exclamation points and you just get them done as fast as possible to get the max level. You know, you, you basically speed level. You don't care about the story, right? And, you know, like I said, save for a couple of MMOs. Like maybe like Elder Scrolls Online maybe is, is an exception. And also uh, Knights of the Old Republic, you know. Um, uh, not Knights of the Old Republic. The, <laughs> the Star Wars MMO. You know what I'm talking about. I'm getting old. Shut up. The Star Wars MMO. It had, it had a good story, right? So those were those were story based as well. And, you know, people have different opinions on whether the story was great or whether it wasn't great. But Final Fantasy 14 has kind of a unique history that these other MMOs don't have. And this is kind of an excuse. You really can't get anywhere. You really can't. You really can't say anything else about it because Final Fantasy 1.0. I did a YouTube video review of it and I gave it like a 6.5 out of 10. This was the initial version, which failed. And I was very generous. If you go back and watch it now, you'd be like, Buona, you really gave this game a pass for a lot of the problems it had. And I was really, really generous. I, I, looking back on it, I was too generous, right? But it was in bad shape. It was in really, really bad shape. And if you've watched all the documentaries and all the, the stories, you know, uh, No Clip has a documentary. There's some other good ones out there uh, that are really, really telling as to where this, where this game came from, right? So it... it, it 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 helps you understand that the producers of Final Fantasy 14 2.0, which is a Realm Reborn, which is where you're going to start if you play this game, they had to basically redo an MMO in two years, and it shows. If you look at the 2.0 content, uh, and you look at what people start with today, it was a it was a lot of stuff rough around the edges, right? Um. And that's kind of an excuse. I, I talk about it all the time. I was like, it's, it's an excuse, but it's it's still valid. The game came from a very, very rough state and had to be redone in a short amount of time. So the beginnings, I like to call the beginnings like levels 1 through 30, are really, 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 really slow. It's a disjointed kind of a tutorial uh, character development phase that when you look back on it, you can kind of appreciate it. And it makes sense 
But when you're going through it, it's pretty slow and boring. I will not argue that point at all. That is the absolute truth. The the first 30 or so levels, you know, especially the levels before you, you get into a dungeon, you know, especially those levels before you get into your first dungeons, like one through 14. If you're in any kind of a rush, oh, my goodness, it's going to be a long haul for you because it is really, really bad. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can skip that you won't regret. Um, which is why a lot of people suggest buying these skip books that are sold on the market, which didn't used to be there. They're, you know, they weren't there at launch. So you had to, um, I, I think they introduced them in Heaven's Word. I don't remember exactly when they introduced them. Um, but they allow you to skip the first 50 levels and uh, essentially skip that story. So a lot of people recommend that because it's so rough. But if, if you compare this to, like I'll compare it to like Final Fantasy XI. Which is one of my favorite MMOs, right? The first 75 levels, whatever, I forgot what the level cap was, 60, 75, took a really long time, right? The first time you do it, just about every MMO, the first time you max takes a really long time. And if you compare the time that you put into those other MMOs uh, versus the time you have to put into this one, it could be roughly the same or even less in some cases right depending on if you get onto a server with double xp because there's servers with double xp out there uh preferred servers because they want you to go to those servers because they aren't as populated um so it depends it depends on whether you go to those but still it doesn't take an extreme amount of time it's just that the first 30 to 40 levels is a really slow paced story. You're setting up the world, you're setting up the characters, the different nations, um, a little bit of spoiler alert coming, talking about it. I'm not gonna talk about too much, but you send up the, the plight of the main antagonist and the main protagonist. So there's a lot of setup in those first 30 levels and there's a lot of mundane, redundant quests. Which, like I said, can get old and boring. And looking back on it, you know, it's something that uh, I've gone through in a lot of other MMOs, too. I, I mean, there's been a lot of useless quests I've gone through in other MMOs. It's, I, I, it's, it hasn't always... I don't, I don't have happy memories of leveling in other MMOs. You know, Final Fantasy XI, I, I really enjoyed the experiences of going to a camp and, you know, just grinding mobs. That's a, that was a different experience. That was like a... That was... That was like an old school MMO experience, really. Uh, and I can't really say these 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 quest based MMOs, the you know like uh, like World of Warcraft is a good example. These, these quest based MMOs is really not a happy go lucky experience. It's, it's something that you want to get through like fairly quickly, right? So that's my point about this first thing is that Final Fantasy fourteen has a slow start. But it is comparable to other MMOs slow starts. It's just this it's very story driven. And that was this is what leads me to a very important point. And this is probably what is why people are so adamant about the slowness of the story. You can't skip it. You can't skip the process or the progress. Main story quest progression is required to unlock a lot of things in Final Fantasy 14. You have to go through the story to get to certain dungeons. You have to do, go through the story to get to certain raids. You have to go through the dungeons to do anything. Or you, I'm sorry, you have to go through the story to do anything. That is a problem. People who are used to skipping story can't anymore. So you've got all these people who don't like story-based MMOs. Or even people that do like story-based MMOs, but they don't like that it gates you or holds you back from doing content. So it's a good reason to be to be concerned or a good reason to be upset or whatever you want to call it about the state of the game, right? But Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy. And they make it very clear to their fans, not necessarily in the marketing material of old. Um, they make it clear that it's a story game first and MMO second, right? They've most they just recently started saying that in the in the marketing messages that they have. Uh, 
That is a JRPG type game first. With a with a rich storyline and an MMO second. Oh, this mimic. Oh my gosh. So many mimics. <laughs> um and it's true. It's a story based MMO. And I, I, I really I really applaud them for doing that. So when you talk to Final Fantasy 14 people, they always tell you, oh yeah, if you get to once you get to Heaven Sword, it gets a lot better. Once you get to, to Stormblood, it gets a lot better. The story gets a lot better. But my rebuttal to that, you know, to those people who constantly say that, is that the people who hate the game because the story holds you back aren't going to change their minds because the story is actually better. Because in all retrospect, I mean, it, 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 in all truth, the Realm Reborn 2.0 story wasn't super terrible. It just started out slow. But once it picked up, it was really good. It got really good once it picked up. Heaven's War was better, obviously, uh, which is the second expansion of this. Heaven's War was better, but it was still good. Those people who are mad that they can't do the story aren't going to change their minds because the story is better. Because the framework is still there. You still have to go through the story to get to anything. And that's the problem. That's why people don't like the structure of Final Fantasy. If you got a friend, if you got a loved one, if you got a, a friend of a friend who just won't get on board the Final Fantasy XIV train, that's probably why. So, going back to the original statement of should you recommend this to a friend, it depends on how that friend feels about story-based games. So if someone asks you, or even if you're listening to this, trying to get uh, an inkling of whether you should play, ask yourself this. Can you play a single player story in an MMO environment? Because that's essentially what Final Fantasy XIV is. It has a single player story in an MMO environment, and a lot of the things in the MMO environment aren't accessible until you finish that story. Nope, I'm taking this. Oh, well. Uh, a lot of these things aren't accessible until you finish the story. So it's a, it's kind of a huge thing for someone new coming to the game. Someone new trying to do something with Final Fantasy XIV. They got to know that the story's going to be there. It ain't going nowhere, right? They got to know that. Um, and one of the things that I tell people all the time is that the game has a lot of content. All right. And this is a problem for some people, and it's kind of a weird problem, because how often do you complain that a game has too much to do? But Final Fantasy is one of those games where it actually has a lot of content. Even if you consider like what was in the 2.0 patch, which was the, the, the base game, to 3.0 with Heaven Sword, to 4.0 with Stormblood, there was a lot of content. So now, if you're joining today, which is you know the, the kind of the purpose of this video, if you're joining today... You've got not only, you know, the first game's content to get through, the 2.0 content to get through. But you've also got all the Heaven's Work content and all the optional side stuff in the patch content. And then you got all the Stormblood. And then you got all the Stormblood content on top of that and all the side patch content. And now that, that Shadowbringers is out, you've got all of that content to go through. So if you're one of those people that ask, okay, what do I have to do to get to the latest content? Well, you've got five, four, how many years? I don't know how many years. A lot of years worth of content to get through. That's not necessarily a problem in most MMOs because a lot of that stuff, like I said before, a lot of that stuff can be skipped and you can still get to the other stuff as long as you level up. Well, <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV, as I said earlier, you can't. You have to go through the 2.0 story or Realm Reborn story. You have to go through the Heaven Sword story. You have to go through the Stormblood story before you even get to uh, Shadowbringer's story. That's a lot of content. That is a lot of content. I'm not even counting. I'm not even counting all the optional dungeons and quests and raids and mini games and stuff that you can do in crafting. Crafting is a whole nother thing. Whole nother set of jobs. Plus the fact that you can level every job under one character. It really, 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 really adds to the content. So you hear complaints that people say, it's, it's, 
it's not good for new people because they have to do so much. They have to go through so much content. And I, and, and I say to myself, it's kind of weird that that's a problem, you know? That <laughs> too much content in the MMO is bad. And we get new content every three months because it's a subscription-based MMO. And they keep throwing more content at us. And it's not bad content. It's actually good content. So it's a unique situation. It's a unique situation that there's too much content that you have to go through. And some people see that as a detriment, as a problem. Like, oh, I have to buy these skip books. No, you don't have to buy the skip books. It's just that the game's been out for so long. There's so much stuff to do. And there's so much story. I, I think I, I made a parallel to somebody. It, it's not completely accurate, but it's close. It's like, imagine if you were required to play Kingdom Hearts 1. In order to play Kingdom Hearts 2. Like required. It wouldn't let you even boot up the game. It's it's a similar parallel. To what's going on. In this game. You can't play Heaven Sword. Unless you play the base game. Or if you buy one of these skip books. For $25. However much it costs. I don't know how much it costs. I've never bought one. I'm kind of glad that I haven't bought one. Because you know people say this as well. This is another side tangent. Um topic on this is that <laughs> it's like i really wish i would have got on this game got into this game when it came out because it must be fun you know to be on top of all this content you know you guys who have been through all the content you get to experience everything as soon as it comes out and you know that's that's true you know but it's not like we just sat back and played other games and then it just <laughs> it just was there. We were playing this game all this time, you know, and there's a lot of stuff to do. So the things that you've got to do to get to this point, we did as well. And in and and in some cases, actually in a lot of cases, it took more time and it was harder. So we've been through that. You haven't been through that if you're a new player. But I can tell you this. This is probably this game has a time reward balance that I akin to like Eve Online. It's like the more time you put into this game, the more you get back. So if you put three years into this game, you're, I mean, you're, you're really, really invested and you, you're getting a lot back out of the game, especially if you've been playing a lot during that time, right? You know, having three, three machines is kind of crazy. Everything's just being deleted. This is nuts. Uh, <laughs> so you, 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 you got to go through all that stuff too. Uh, I finished. I've already finished Shadowbringers. This is why I'm kind of showing you uh, Palace of the Dead, which is like old content, so I don't drop any spoilers about Shadowbringers and anything. And I'm playing an old class, so you're not. I think I don't think we've seen any of the new classes in here either. So if your question, just to answer the question, you know, if you're a new player, should you get into this game? My answer is, if you like MMOs, you should at least download the free trial, which is one through thirty-five, right? And it ain't the best part of the game. 1 through 35 is not the best part of the game. It actually just gives you an introduction to the controls. Whether you can run the game. You can get a sense for how controllers work. Uh, it's, it's, it's akin to a demo, right? It's a long demo. Because you can you can play. You don't. There's no time limit. But you just limit it to how far you can level. Uh, you'll get a sense of the dungeons. You'll be able to play through a few dungeons by doing that. And this is absolutely free. There's no obligation at all to do anything after that. And if you feel like you want to keep going, if you feel like you guys keep turning into a frog, man. Um, if you feel like you want to keep going, then that's where the investment comes in. Uh, where you have to buy the base game and then buy the expansions. Now, it, it, this is one of those games where it's hard to... It's kind of hard to recommend buying the latest expansion because, like I said, there's so much you have to do there's so much you have to do before you even get to Shadowbringers. <laughs> Got the frog again. I, I've never seen this before. It's a three-timer, boy. Um, you have to go through so much content to get to Shadowbringers. So it's hard to recommend to say, hey, just buy them all. Even though I love it, that person that I'm recommending it to may not even get to all that content. So it may just be worth to buy the base game, right? And then once you get to Heaven Sword, once you get to Shadow uh, to Stormblood and the other expansions, 
Maybe you'll have a better idea of whether you want to keep going. I thought he changed again, chat. Uh, I called you guys chat. Um, I I can't in good conscience recommend this all the expansions to everybody. You know, it's like it, you, you really should evaluate it, especially since it has a monthly fee. You're going to be paying beyond that first month because you buy the base game. You get the first 30 days included with that with that purchase. Um, and then you have to pay uh, as little as twelve dollars and ninety nine cents a month to continue. So to 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 recommend all those expansions, which is hundreds and hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours of content. And it ain't cheap either. It's, it's, it's a pretty penny to get everything. Because um, you have to buy the base game and then you have to buy Shadowbringers. Which is, I believe, over $60 for all of that. And then you got the monthly fee on top of that. I think it's over $60 for all of that. So it's not cheap to buy everything. But if you go with the base game only, try it out. Get past the Re a Realm Reborn. Get a feel for the game. Level up the jobs. And try the crafting and the gathering stuff because it's a really rich system. Then it becomes easier to to make a decision whether you want to keep going or whether you want to buy uh, a skip book and then just, you know, buy buy the expansion, and then skip directly to um, a certain expansion. Now, if you're going to skip something, now this is a this is a personal opinion that is shared by others, not just me. If you're going to skip something, don't skip Heaven's Sword. You can skip Stormblood all you want. You can skip A Realm Reborn all you want. This game shined at Heaven's Ward. It was, uh, to me, it was like one of the, the, the high points, a really, really high point of the game. Both story, mechanics wise, dungeons, atmosphere, character development, voice acting. It was running on all cylinders at this point. It was, it was really, really good. Really, really good. Um,. So if you're going to skip something, don't skip Heaven's Sword, please. You know, skip the Realm. Re uh, I, I, I think I recommend it to because I watched a bunch of streamers and I talked to some people that were that were running the game for the first time. And they were they were contemplating buying a skip book, but they didn't want to cheat themselves out of content. Right. Which nobody does. Nobody wants to cheat themselves out of content because that's what you're doing. You're basically paying to skip. You're basically paying to not do content and. Some may see that as a value, but it can be a waste too. Um, so don't skip Heaven Sword, and just don't. Uh, the, the recommended like the recommendation I would give people is that you know try the game till like level thirty, right? You know, see if you can get through the first thirty levels. And, and if you get to the first 30 levels and you're like, all right, I can keep going. You know, I can keep going. Then just keep going. If you get to the first 30 levels, you've done some dungeons. You've got to feel for the job. And you're like, all right, I can't stand this anymore. I'm going to, I got to, I got to get to the next expansion. I can't take this anymore. Then buy a skip book at that point. I think that's fair. If you can go through the first 30 levels and find that you, you just can't work through that. Skipping those next 20 levels is a respectable decision. I can't argue against that because it takes it takes a while. It takes a while. And then once you get to once you do the skip, you get to Heaven Sword and let me tell you the game it gets a lot better at that point. But going back to our initial point, if you hate stories, you're not going to care. You're absolutely not going to care. You're going to be like, "Up oh, story. I can't do this until I do story." Now there's some tips I have for people who are getting into this game. Um and this was the biggest one because I've had at least four people come through my stream with this plight. Like, hey, Buona, should I do the, uh, I've been doing the side quest. I've been doing the side quest, Buona. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be making too much of a difference on my levels or whatever. I'm like, and uh, these are mostly people that came from WoW. In World of Warcraft, you did all the side quests, right? You guys in WoW can attest to that. Uh, you can let me know in the comments if that's not true. But I'm pretty sure that's true. You just do all the side quests that you see. You see an exclamation point, you do it. Just the way it is. In Final Fantasy XIV, that's not the case. Side quests are mainly used... I don't know if they're designed for this, but they're mainly used to level alternate jobs. Because in this game, you pay for one character, right? And there's certain limitations and stuff with that. 
that you can get more than one character but you pay for one character that can do everything so this one character can do every job every craft and you're not permitted currently although you soon will be to repeat the main story you're not permitted to repeat the main story uh, so to get XP, you would have to grind dungeons, do other types of leave quests, uh, do what I'm doing right here, which is a, a mode called Palace of the Dead, which is a deep dungeon grind, kind of like a rogue light, a very, very light randomization. You see people getting trapped and, you know, there's randomized loot and stuff like that. But the, the, the layouts are relatively the same. They're, they're RNG based. This is another way you can level and side quests. Side quests are used to, uh, to level up alternate jobs. So when you first come into the game, don't, don't, oh my gosh, I can't emphasize this enough. Do not do all the side quests. It's okay to do a few of them, but don't do them all. Please don't do them all. Please don't do them all. Um, and I think you'll be fine. The game is... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about Shadowbringers too much because I plan on doing a video about that about my thoughts about Shadowbringers, and um, I find that it's one of the best MMOs out right now, and that's a heavily heavily biased opinion, heavily heavily biased opinion, right? Um, it's one of the best MMOs out right now, and i'm not saying that lightly i mean there's there's a few good mmos out right now but i i really believe that this is the best mmo out right now and you can't go wrong with it and given that there's not really a lot of western mmos coming out soon uh amazon just announced they're going to do a lord of the rings mmo we'll see how that goes because it's going to be free to play i really don't think mmos are good for free to play it's just me it, they either got to be buy the player or a subscription um uh, Amazon is coming out with a free-to-play MMO, and that's about the biggest news we've gotten this year. We got Crowfall, we've got uh, uh, Camelot Unchained. Those are two that are are old-school sandbox uh, PvP-based MMOs that are coming out, which is not for everybody. I like them, but they're not for everybody. So you gotta, you really gotta be careful. As to what you play today, because a lot of these free to play MMOs, I'm looking at you, Black Desert Online and, and all these other ones. There, there's always there's always a catch. There's always something. And the people that, that love these other MMOs, they they can tolerate that something. But you may not be able to like with this game. The something is it's a heavily story based game. Everything revolves around the story. You can't get around that. And honestly, I think it's worth it. But other people out there may not. You see a lot of WoW uh, diehards which will not touch this game because they think it's too anime and they think it's too slow and they think it's you know all these different things. And then you got some other WoW refugees that we call them that absolutely love it and can appreciate the differences between it and WoW. They won't call it. They won't necessarily call it better than WoW. They'll say it's different. It's different enough to get into. It's different enough to play. Personally, I think it's better than WoW. That's why I don't play WoW. <laughs> You gotta play this instead. So that's that. So I'm having a great time uh, with this MMORPG called Final Fantasy XIV. You may have noticed that I put up a lot of videos on my YouTube channel uh, about how the story. I, I, I took a lot of time and I'm still kind of working on that. Putting up all the voiced cutscenes. All of the voice cutscenes, and it's important to denote that because there's other videos up there of a Final Fantasy story, but they have all those words that people like to skip, right? And I think that's a weird thing to put up on YouTube because you can, you know, you could go into the game and go into your inn and, and do the same thing that we're doing. You know, it's not anything hidden or anything, uh, anything like a hidden game mode to do this. You just go into your end and you can watch all the old cutscenes that you've already done, right? So, I, I really, 
encourage people that if they are going to skip, you know, they can come and watch my video or videos. There's it's a lot of them. They're really long, but they're kind of I got them set up in like a movie like format, right? To where you can just sit back and watch them and you don't have to read anything. You just it's like watching a, a video game movie. And you can go back and if you think a Realm Reborn was too much of a slog to get through, you can watch that two to three hour video I put up. I think that's how long it is. And you'll see the story. You'll see how everything comes together. It's very plain. I mean, you don't miss much. I mean, there's some there's some story elements that aren't included because we don't have all of the cutscenes because they're not all voiced. But you still got two to three hours of cutscenes, right? That was a mistake on my part. Sorry, T. I am that guy. I pulled when I should have. Um, you can still get the gist of what's going on. And you can see why people are doing what and who these characters are. Especially if you're going to... Uh, like I said, for people who buy and skip books, you can know who Alpha No is. You can know who Alice a is. And you can know who Yistola is. And Urian J. And, and Thancred. And Minfilia. And all the Scions. And, and Papa Lama 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 and Ida and all these other characters, you know, people from Stormblood, all these other people, you can you can get a sense for who they are just by watching this video. If you can't tolerate the story, I'm going to end it here. This is Born from Born TV. It's a really hot topic today, and I just wanted to just like just give you guys a laid back discussion as if I were streaming as to why I believe. Or just my opinion on the topic of whether you could recommend this game, Final Fantasy XIV, to a new player or not. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.